Hello my soccer universe. Well, my IT problems probably have been solved now with me having a new laptop and I thought let's use this laptop to record a video and see how that works and you know getting used to maybe a new setup here as well. Uh, furthermore, I know we had a lot of Europa League action. I decided to postpone this because tonight is the start of the playoffs in the Austrian Bundesliga with Lusk going to Vienna and playing Rapid Vienna. So I also thought since I have not made a video on the action in the Austrian Bundesliga other than short videos, which you can all find uh, very conveniently in the playlist up here, that we'll talk about what has been happening over the past three weeks. Spoiler alert, Lusk have not been doing well, but there were quite a few things that were happening. Uh, how does the playoff mode work? Because it's one of the oddest uh, things that we have here in Austria. So that is another thing that we're, that we're talking about and of course uh, the current round as well. There have been three main storylines. I mean, first the personal one with Lusk. Then we had, of course, the race for the top six spots, which really got down to, to the wire. It could have been really exciting or was exciting. And then, of course, the complete cluster mess that Rapid produced after winning the Derby, where everyone should be talking about how good they were. And it went completely pear-shaped in a way as well that had long-reaching and also international consequences for them. Okay, first things first, let's talk last over the last three rounds. Uh, it was not good. I mean, when before we talked about, uh, we lost to Salzburg, which was a relatively uh, tight game. Lask actually were better, however, they didn't defend set pieces very well. They ended up losing in the cup. Then you play against Klagenfurt at home, where especially in the second half, you create many chances, you don't take them. You're happy then to get out with a draw, but really, you should have won that game. Uh, same thing goes to Hartberg, where you play 10 men for uh, against 10 men with a good half an hour. You create chances, you don't take, take them. The game fizzles out. It's nil-nil. This is where we left it, and it was almost missed opportunities because neither Salzburg or Sturm Graz have won in these first two games uh, of the um, uh, Bundesliga season as well. Yes, they moved on in the cup. But then came the real downer. When you play Wolfsburg at home, you lose for the first time at home in the season. Not a great look, honestly. But the game, you, there were some uh, alleviating circumstances. First off, uh, you give away an early penalty that was really, really stupid. You played well up until that point. Then your captain, Robert Schul, who was just out uh, with sickness, comes back. He is sent off for a stamp on, you know, one of, one of, one of those where a player tackles in and you stamp, uh, you want to catch the ball, but you uh, end up hitting uh, the shin of the player. It is unfortunately the modern, in the modern game, it is a red card, not really uh, sold on these, to be honest, because there was no intention. For me, a red card, there should always be an intent or a denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity. There was no intent there. So, uh, but yeah, I've seen this and uh, to be fair, when Hartberg got a player less, this was a very, very similar red card. So um, I guess maybe may ever, of course, with 10 men, yes, you create chances, but Wolfsburg has so many good ch chances. This was a loss, you take it. But then it was already, <laughs> you have not won yet. You go to Alta and Plut in the worst performance of the season. And that includes the early games where Alta should have won. Uh, but they also kind of put a ball on the net. Late on you had a song, but that would have not have been deserved. And then you have the last game where you basically, I mean, in Alta you have already qualified for the top six. But you have lost completely sight of Sturm and Salzburg at this point, which you thought you might get to. No, it was not happening. And then uh, against Salzburg you end up conceding after, I think, within 20 seconds or something like that. You play well again, but without Robert Schull, there are no goals, there's no confidence, and so the entire mood around Lusk is really, really bad. The positive is uh, that now you play against the top teams, and Lusk have been doing better against the top teams than against the bottom teams, with the exception of Salzburg, although you won at Sal Salzburg. So let's see how that is going. However, um, if there was one more round to play, the way things have been going, I don't think it last qual 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 qualify for the, for the top six, and that's damning in itself. 
The top six race though, I mean, Lusk were almost in it. They fortunately did not get involved in it, uh, but the top six race, it was basically six teams uh, or five teams vying for three spots. And it was always Klagenfurt, Hartberg, Rapid, and then maybe can Wolfsburg or Austria Vienna get in. Austria Vienna having a really good uh, return leg. They do not get in because they lose the derby. Otherwise, they have been winning game after game after game after game. And they were very, very, very into it. They actually had the highest points total of a team to not reach the top six in a total of 33 points. Wolfsburg ended up losing the round before the last one, so in the, 20, in the 21st round, uh, at Sturm Graz, which basically took them out. I mean, yes, the win against Lask would have seen them fight, 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 fight for it, but I think they also messed up a little bit the earlier part of the season. So basically at the at, at the last round it was between Klangfurt, Hartberg, Rapid and Wolfsburg and it was really, really a tight one. Curiously enough, ahead of those, everyone knew if Klangfurt and Rapid play out the draw, this also would then qualify, regardless of the results for uh, Aus Austria, thanks to the head-to-head, -head, would qualify Hartberg as well. And everyone was fearing that, you know, there might be this little goal this way. No, exactly, it did not happen this way because Rapid took a lead through Lung. And we'll talk about Rapid in just, in just, just a sec because uh, they had to, uh, they could not play some important players for them. Um, they took the lead, made it 1-0. Um, and at that point, then this meant that Austria Klanghofer were, were teetering, but also Hartberg were uh, down a goal against Sturm Graz. So at that moment, Hartberg out. Hartberg then equalized through a deflected, slightly deflected free kick, but it was actually a well taken uh, free kick to Afti. And suddenly Klanghofer out. At the same time, Austria Vienna are winning, of course. So they are in. But only when Klanghofer then equalized against Rapid Vienna. Then it was all settled. So for the last 20 to 20, 20, 20 minutes, nothing was happening anymore. Austria Vienna probably would have needed, and uh, from one side, I think they would have been a good addition to the top six because you know uh, Hartberg and Klangfurt are two teams that, while well, uh, Klangfurt have a nice stadium, uh, they don't bring the spectators in. So in that sense, um, Austria Vienna would have been nice. But on the other side. And it would have been good money, money wise, I think, for all of us. On, on, the, on the other side, Austria Vienna in the current form are probably favorites to win the relegation group, or how it's officially called the qualification group. We'll talk about them uh, format in a sec. But yeah, it, uh, they might win that one and still have a chance to make it into Europe this way. See the final table here, I mean, it was really tight. I mean, the top two, 50 for Salzburg, 46 for Sturm. And now we'll talk about it. It's back to, it's only because Sturm didn't win and Salzburg did win that there is now a four point gap. Then it was a huge gap and then everyone is close together. Lask at 35, we had then the two teams, Klangfurt and Hartberg at 34 and the two Vienna teams end, ended on 33. And it's the head to head in the derbies that actually decided in favor of Rapid, in addition to the goal difference, but head to head mm -hmm. goals first. Also, in the relegation round, uh, about against relegation, Lusna had not won a game last uh, year. They won the first one coming back against Sirol. The win also won a little bit lucky against Blau Weiss Linz. And Blau Weiss Linz, similar to Lask, make points against the big teams, but not against the small ones. And so it's kind of tight. Altach, Blau Weiss Linz, 1919, Tirol, 1410. Doesn't look like it, but the format makes it that exciting that actually Lustna might survive this. Uh, before we go into the big story on Rapid uh, and talk about the format, there was also major, major news that a uh, long time coach, I think 13 years, uh, for 13 years, Thomas Silberberg of VSG Tirol have decided to, has decided to step down after the season because he cannot deal with the pressures anymore. So uh, a little bit sorry to see him go, but unfortunately VSG Tirol is a team that is not, I made a video about them that you can find here, uh, that is not really a success, uh, is not built for a long time success because they cannot play in their own stadium. So I guess this is also the pressure and then the format doesn't make it easier for him as well. But the biggest story was, and I made quite a few short videos on that, is the heavy punishments that Rapid have received. After winning the Derby, the first Derby they win in their own stadium. The stadium has been standing for eight years. 
They win 3 0, play brilliantly in the first half. I mean, this, this is probably the best uh, way that Rapid have played and scored. Everyone should be talking about that. What happened? Rapid players celebrate. I mean, first of all, uh, the uh, CEO, Stefan Hoffmann, for, former player, already uh, uses some rough language. They finally we have beaten those a holes and so on from uh, Aus 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 Austria Vienna. Apologize, blah, blah, blah got punished for that one. But then the players are caught on camera singing homophobic uh, chants against Austria Vienna. And that made the rounds and that really blew up in their faces. The Austria Bundesliga actually came down relatively swiftly. I mean, it took a week, but this is basically uh, the way that the proceedings go. And they came, came down and banned all those players uh, with uh, bans that have to be taken immediately uh, from two to three, uh, from one to three games was then uh, reduced uh, for one player, for the goalkeeper, who then, funnily enough, was caught in another video because he said first, ah, he was not that involved. Yeah, he was fully involved, but you know, the Bundesliga said we already made a verdict there. But especially Marco Grühl and Guido Burgstaller uh, had to sit out for three games and they could sit out for more should they be caught again. Uh, they also have to go into schools and talk about that um, the, the themes and you know uh, what they learn from them and that you should not do these things. Fortunately enough, Rapid has a vice president uh, who is um, uh, a, a university professor in gender studies who is related to the Hanapi family, you know, former Rapid player and I think up until re recently the most capped Austrian international. Uh, so they are trying to attack this quite well, I have to say, and I think it's good that this is happening. Now, um, this is not all my personal views on that. And there's also, I think for Rapid, there could be even points deductions if that should happen again with the players. Now, uh, personal opinion first. Um, these chants have nothing to do in the soccer stadium. Yes, they were commonplace 10, 20 years ago. Uh, really, they were com com commonplace, but uh, times have changed. And not only fan behavior, but especially player behavior needs to change with these times. Cannot happen that you, if you play a weak pass that you call this is a gay pass. This is what used to happen. Uh, so that has to be completely stamped and done. It should not happen anymore. Uh, in Aus Austria, there are teams and fan blocks that um, in, Aus in Austria that actively are against this. Unfortunately, in Vienna, it's not the case. And I'm not excusing him Aus Austria. Their fans have been doing some bad stuff as well. Not in that sense, but you know, uh, they have some relations with unsavory fan bases themselves. Um, so that it hits there might actually start a conversation. Although the when I he, read the overarching reaction from Rapid fans is basically we don't understand this. Why this is not no, no, no normal? Don't we have more important things to talk about? Yes, we do not because this is something really ugly. Now I think player bands. Okay, I personally would have said you have you have misbehaved, and you know they have a, a catalog of punishments and, and and so on, and I guess you have to go with them. Uh, I personally would have said now nah, I think banning them from playing might not send the right message because this gets the fan base riled up even more. What I would have done is that a uh, give them a punishment of like a month's salary that has to go to charity related to homosexuals or in towards this um, intent that will hurt a little bit and also that will serve the greater cause also get some schooling done teach them why this is not right and what impact make them go to these organizations make them work with them and i think that going to the schools is also a good idea i think this is personally how i would have done it however you know Bundesliga came down with that uh, sentence quite swiftly I did not find it good that Rapid appealed that one because you know do the mea culpa I mean you could actually have the larger result there um, if you accept yes we've done wrong then accept the, the damage in addition Rapid was hit with a two point fine for next season because there were pyrotechnics thrown and there were some uh, bad incidents there where I have the question why next season uh, it's happened this season find them now also and we'll talk about the format points are being halved so a two point fine in reality is only a one point fine 
just kind of blood and rapid fans have been known whether you I don't want to now start a discussion of pyrotechnics here but rapid fans have been known for violating these rules for quite a while do it right now because you know in England it, it, Italy those uh, punishments are taken for the current uh, the current season but then I'm a Lusk fan uh, this would also serve me quite well Okay, I saw that already points will be half. We saw the table from before and I pulled it up here again. Now the Austrian Bundesliga is split into two parts, a top six and a bottom six. The top six play for all the European spots, only the sixth place team cannot do anything. However, in order to make the championship a little bit more exciting, points are being halved. And this is not a new idea, this already happened in the 80s when uh, the league that the top two leagues were split into three where you had uh, I think a top eight, a middle eight and a bottom eight and the middle eight was uh, doing promotion and relegation and the top were playing for championship and so on. The halving of, of the points makes it more exciting in theory. The problem is that Salzburg is so far ahead and yes the four point deficit is now a two point deficit for Sturm Graz which I guess makes it a little bit more exciting and if only top games I don't find any sporting value in this decision uh, to have the points. On the opposite, it actually makes the battle against the relegation a real dogfight. And teams like Lustenau that would have no business in still being alive suddenly are very, very much alive. Because if we have now the points, and if we look now at the table this way, now we have Alter and Blauweiss at 9-9, we have Tirol at 7, we have Lustenau at 5. This is no... It's just four points away from safety for them. This is not fair. I think in the relegation round the points should not be have up top. Now it gets also really, really, really tight, but it was or, or already tight. We have the top two, 25 and 23. We have 17, 17, 3 and 17. And we have repeat on 16. Now it also has, 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 has been said, you know, uh, the points are rounded down. So Lusk's 35 points total. Point is shaved off and is now going to 17. But this means that Lusk will get a uh, imaginary star which might serve as a first tiebreaker. Same thing goes for Rapid, who go from 33 down to 32, and that will be halved. So it's around rounding down the first tiebreaker is, did you get rounded down or not? So Lask and Rapid Vienna have those imaginary stars. If you would like, they hold the first tiebreaker. I really do not like this format. I really don't. And I have no, and I've been saying this all along. It is, yes, it is made to make it more exciting, but it was always talked about the championship. It gets really exciting on, 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 on the bottom, but it's not healthy and it's not fair in sporting values. Personally, if you split it this way, I would find it fairer uh, because also this, the entire re re regular season only counts for half. It's not fair either. What I would do is actually, yes, split it in top six and bottom, bottom, bottom six, but then you keep only the results of the teams that you have already played against. Meaning, so uh, let's take the last case. You would only take the games in the, in the, in the, in the table. We've played against uh, Salzburg, Sturm, Klagenfurt, Hartberg and Rapid. So that the games that you've already played count for full. And the games against the bottom six count in such a sense that you have qualified. I personally think this would be a much fairer way of addressing the issue of making it more exciting if you want to make it more exciting. But I guess it is not as easy to understand. But that would be my solution to the whole thing. Having said that, as I said, it starts tonight. Uh, it usually is now that the championship round plays on uh, Sundays and the um, qualification round or the relegation round, or how, how you wanna, uh, uh, call it. I personally prefer re relegation group, qualification group because the top team or maybe the top two teams, depending on how many spots all stref, can go into play for the final uh, conference league spot. Only the six place teams cannot. We'll talk when it gets to that. Uh, so those play bottom group Sunday, uh, Saturday, top group play Sunday. However, we have not pulled the game ahead. Rapid against Lusk to start it all off. It's a pretty good game. I'm not looking forward to that one. Yes, it's good that Rapid players are still banned. Really important ones, the ones that score goals. Uh, however, Lusk is in no good shape as well. And yeah, one would need at least a point to at least get the thing, things going. A win would be bad. But yeah, let's see how, how this is going. 
So that is it, what has been happening in the Austrian Bundesliga so far, yay, I have made a video now on my new lab, laptop, lab know how you like the quality, but more importantly, lab know how you think, uh, think on all the topics that we've been talking about, how you think about these, and where do you see the Austrian Bundesliga go going, how do you like the league format, what do you think about the punishments for repeat players, and anything else. In any case, I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe, bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!